The Elephant Island Chronicles presents The Dance of the Beasts, The Ballad of the Black Swans and White Buffaloes by Conrad Hannon. Narration by Eleven Labs. Forward. In the mythical land of Eleutheria, ancient prophecies and legendary creatures come to life in a gripping tale of division and unity. As the land teeters on the brink of chaos, symbols of hope and change emerge, each representing different facets of the nation's struggle. From the majestic white buffalo to the enigmatic black swan, the story unfolds against a backdrop of political tension and societal unrest. Themes of tradition versus progress, confronting neglected issues, and the pursuit of a shared destiny drive the narrative forward. In The Dance of the Beasts, readers are invited to explore a world where the mythical and the real intertwine, offering a powerful reflection on the challenges and potential for renewal within any society. Disclaimer. Any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. Cough, cough. This work is a product of imagination, and any similarities are unintentional. Conrad Hannon. The Dance of the Beasts. The Ballad of the Black Swans and White Buffaloes. By Conrad Hannon. The land of Eleutheria sprawled vast and varied, from the misty mountains in the north to the sun-baked deserts in the south. Once a beacon of hope and prosperity, it now groaned under the weight of division and unrest. The air hung heavy with tension, like the moments before a thunderstorm breaks. In the bustling cities, neighbors eyed each other with suspicion, the clatter of construction mixed with heated arguments on street corners. Rural areas weren't spared either. Fields lay fallow as farmers debated the future over fence posts, their voices carrying on the wind. Amidst this chaos, whispers of an ancient prophecy began to circulate. The white buffalo comes, old-timers muttered in dim taverns, their eyes gleaming with hope and fear. When the land is at its darkest, the white buffalo will appear to lead us back to greatness. Many scoffed at such tales. Fairy stories, they'd say, shaking their heads. But as the days grew darker and the future more uncertain, even the skeptics found themselves glancing to the horizon, wondering if salvation might indeed come on four hooves. It was on a crisp autumn morning when the white buffalo first appeared. The sun had just begun to peek over the eastern mountains, painting the sky in hues of pink and gold. In a secluded valley, where wildflowers dotted the grass with splashes of purple and yellow, a figure emerged from the morning mist. At first, those who saw it thought their eyes were playing tricks. But as the mist cleared, there was no denying the creature before them. The white buffalo stood proud and tall, its coat so brilliantly white it seemed to glow in the early morning light. Word spread like wildfire. By midday, crowds had gathered at the edge of the valley, jostling for a better view. The air buzzed with excitement and the murmur of a thousand conversations. It's just as the prophecy said, an old woman said, her voice quavering with emotion. Look at how it shines. A young man next to her squinted skeptically. It's a buffalo, a rare one sure, but still just a buffalo. How's it supposed to save us? As if in answer to his question, the white buffalo raised its massive head and let out a bellow that echoed across the valley. The sound sent a shiver through the crowd, silencing even the most vocal doubters. Then, to everyone's amazement, the white buffalo spoke. Its voice was deep and resonant, carrying easily to every ear. People of Eleutheria, it said, I have come in your hour of need. Too long have you strayed from the path of greatness. Too long have you allowed division and strife to tear you apart. But fear not, for I bring you hope of renewal. The crowd listened, spellbound. Some wept openly, while others nodded in fierce agreement. Follow me, the white buffalo continued, and together we will make Eleutheria great again. We will restore the values that once made this land the envy of the world. A cheer went up from the assembled masses so loud it startled a flock of birds from a nearby tree. In that moment, 
hope bloomed in hearts that had long ago given up on such luxuries. But not all were convinced. On the outskirts of the crowd, a group of skeptics huddled together, their faces etched with concern. Pretty words, one muttered, but words alone won't fix our problems. Another nodded in agreement. And who's to say what greatness even means? My greatness might be your nightmare. Their doubts, however, were drowned out by the swell of enthusiasm that swept through the valley. The white buffalo had ignited a spark, and that spark was quickly becoming a flame. As the days passed, the white buffalo's following grew. People flocked from all corners of Eleutheria to hear its message of renewal and restoration. Camps sprang up around the valley, filled with eager believers, ready to follow their new leader to the ends of the earth. The next miraculous event occurred in one of these camps on a night when the stars shone like diamonds in the velvet sky. A bonfire roared in the center of the camp, casting flickering shadows on the faces gathered around it. The white buffalo stood nearby, its coat gleaming orange in the firelight. Suddenly, the fire seemed to grow, its flames reaching higher and higher. The gathered crowd gasped and stepped back, shielding their eyes from the intense heat and light. And then, a shape began to emerge from the heart of the fire. Wings of flame spread wide, scattering embers like stars. A long, graceful neck arched upward, crowned with a head of burning gold. As the gathered masses watched in awe, the phoenix rose from the ashes, its feathers a dazzling array of reds, oranges, and golds. The heat from its wings washed over the crowd, but it wasn't an unpleasant warmth. It felt like the sun on your face after a long winter, like hope rekindled in a weary heart. The phoenix let out a melodious cry that sent shivers down every spine. Then it spoke its voice like the crackling of flames. I am the phoenix, it declared, born anew from the ashes of defeat. I come to join the white buffalo in leading Eleutheria back to its former glory. The crowd erupted in cheers and applause. The white buffalo nodded solemnly to its new ally. Together, the white buffalo said, we shall overcome any obstacle. No defeat is final, and no setback is permanent. Like the phoenix, Eleutheria will rise again. The enthusiasm was infectious. Even those who had come to scoff found themselves caught up in the moment, their hearts swelling with newfound optimism. As dawn broke the next day, painting the sky in pastel hues, word of the phoenix's arrival spread across Eleutheria. People gathered in city squares and rural crossroads to discuss this latest development. First, the white buffalo, now a phoenix, a shopkeeper said as he arranged his wares. Seems the old magic is returning to the land. His customer, an elderly woman, nodded sagely. About time, too. We could use some magic to sort out this mess we're in. Not everyone shared their enthusiasm, however. Worried conversations took place in the halls of power, in sleek offices with views of manicured gardens. This could upset everything, a man in an expensive suit said, pacing back and forth. The people are supposed to be divided, not united behind some, some fairy tale creatures. His companion, seated behind a massive desk, steepled her fingers. Calm yourself, she said, her voice cool and collected. Every action has a reaction. If these beasts want to play savior, we have some beasts of our own. Meanwhile, in the heart of Eleutheria, another wondrous creature was making its presence known. The golden goose waddled through the streets of the capital, leaving a trail of shimmering eggs in its wake. People gasped and pointed as the plump bird passed by, its feathers gleaming like polished metal in the sunlight. Children ran alongside it, scooping up the golden eggs with gleeful shouts. Look, Mama, a little girl cried, holding up an egg that shone like a miniature sun. It's real gold. Her mother took the egg, turning it over in her hands with a look of wonder. So the stories are true, she murmured. The golden goose has returned to Eleutheria.
The goose stopped in the main square, preening its feathers as a crowd gathered around it. Then, to everyone's surprise, it began to speak. Good people of Eleutheria, it said, its voice unexpectedly deep for such a rotund bird, I bring you prosperity and abundance. These eggs are but a taste of what awaits us all if we embrace our exceptional nature. A murmur ran through the crowd. Exceptional nature? Someone called out. What does that mean? The golden goose ruffled its feathers importantly. It means, my friends, that Eleutheria is unique among nations. We have a special destiny, a greatness that sets us apart. These golden eggs represent the success that is our birthright. The crowd cheered, dazzled by the goose's words and the glitter of gold, but on the fringes, a few exchanged skeptical glances. Sounds too good to be true, one man muttered to his neighbor. And if we're so exceptional, how'd we end up in this mess in the first place? His friend shrugged. Don't know, but I wouldn't mind one of those eggs all the same. As news of the golden goose spread, hope seemed to be returning to Eleutheria. The white buffalo's message of renewal, combined with the phoenix's promise of rebirth and the golden goose's vision of prosperity, painted a picture of a brighter future that many found irresistible. But other forces were stirring across the troubled waters of Lake Disunion in the shadowy forests of the Eastern Reach. It began with a ripple on the lake's surface, a disturbance so slight that most would have missed it. But keen eyes watched from the shore, and they knew what it meant. It's coming, a hooded figure whispered, its voice barely audible over the lapping of waves on the shore. As if in response, the waters began to churn. Waves grew larger, crashing against the rocky shore with increasing force. The sky darkened, clouds rolling in as if summoned by an unseen hand. And then, from the depths of the lake, it emerged. Sleek and graceful, its feathers as black as a moonless night, the black swan rose from the waters. It spread its wings wide, droplets cascading off them like liquid obsidian. The hooded figures on the shore fell to their knees. The black swan has come, they intoned in unison. The agent of change is here. The black swan glided to the shore, its movements fluid and purposeful. When it spoke, its voice was melodious yet carried an undercurrent of steel. Rise, it commanded the hooded figures. There is work to be done. One of the figures lifted its head, revealing a face lined with age and wisdom. We have awaited your arrival, O harbinger of change. What would you have us do? The black swan's eyes, dark and fathomless, scanned the group. Eleutheria stands at a crossroads, it said. The old ways seek to reassert themselves, to drag us back to a past that never truly existed. We must show the people a new path, a future of progress and transformation. A murmur of agreement ran through the assembled crowd. The black swan continued, its voice growing stronger. They have their white buffalo, their phoenix, their golden goose, symbols of a stagnant past, of false promises and fool's gold. We shall show them true change, the kind that reshapes the very foundations of a nation. As the black swan spoke, the wind picked up, carrying its words across Lake Disunion and into the heart of Eleutheria. Those who heard them felt a shiver of excitement, or perhaps fear, run down their spines. Change was coming to Eleutheria, whether it was ready or not. While the black swan gathered its forces, another beast made its presence known in Eleutheria. This one didn't emerge from mystical waters or rise from magical flames. No, the gray rhino simply charged onto the scene, trampling everything in its path. It came from the southern borders, a massive, unstoppable force that seemed to embody every problem Eleutheria had ignored for too long. Its hide was thick and scarred, impervious to the weapons of those who tried to stop it. Towns and villages in its path were left in ruins. Fields were trampled and roads destroyed. The gray rhino's rampage was a wake-up call, 
a violent reminder of the issues that had been swept under the rug. In the Capitol, emergency meetings were called. Politicians argued and pointed fingers, but none seemed to have a solution. We must stop this beast, one official cried, slamming his fist on the table. With what resources? Another shot back. We've been underfunding our defenses for years. A third voice chimed in. Perhaps if we had addressed the border issues earlier. Their bickering was interrupted by a low, rumbling sound. The ground began to shake. Eyes widened in horror as they realized what was happening. The gray rhino had reached the capital. Panic ensued as the massive beast crashed through the city gates. Its thunderous footsteps echoed through the streets, accompanied by the sound of crumbling buildings and terrified screams. Amid the chaos, a small group huddled in an alleyway, watching the destruction unfold. This is it, one of them said, his voice tight with fear. This is what we've been warning about for years. Another nodded grimly. The gray rhino. The obvious threat everyone chose to ignore until it was too late. As they spoke, the rhino paused in its rampage. It turned its massive head towards them, its tiny eyes glinting with what almost looked like intelligence. Then, to their utter shock, it spoke. You see me now, don't you? The gray rhino's voice was like grinding stone. Now that I'm destroying your homes, trampling your fields, you finally pay attention. The group stared, dumbfounded. Braver, or perhaps more foolish than the rest, one of them stepped forward. What? What do you want? he asked, his voice quavering. The gray rhino snorted, a sound like a blast furnace. Want? I want nothing. I am not here because I want to be. I am here because you ignored me for too long. I am every problem you chose not to see, every crisis you decided could wait until tomorrow. With that, the gray rhino turned and continued its path of destruction, leaving the group to ponder its ominous words. As news of the gray rhino's rampage spread, it seemed that Eleutheria was being torn apart at the seams. The white buffalo and its allies tried to rally the people, promising renewal and prosperity. The black swan whispered of necessary change and progress. And through it all, the gray rhino continued its relentless charge, a physical manifestation of every neglected issue. But there was another player in this grand game, one that preferred to stay in the shadows. In a hidden chamber deep beneath the capital, the Dragon King coiled around its horde of secrets and whispered promises. The Dragon King was not a beast of flesh and blood like the others. It was more like a living shadow, its form constantly shifting and changing. Its eyes glowed with an inner fire, reflecting the countless schemes and plots it had set in motion. Around it gathered a select few, the power brokers and kingmakers of Eleutheria. They came in secret, their faces hidden behind ornate masks. The pieces are in place. The Dragon King's voice was a sibilant whisper that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. The Grey Rhino, its destruction was all part of the plan. One of the masked figures spoke up. And the Black Swan? The Dragon King's form rippled, a chuckle like the rustle of scales. Ah, our agent of change. It too follows the plan, though it knows it not. Its calls for progress will drive the people further into the arms of the white buffalo. And the white buffalo, rallying the masses with dreams of a return to greatness. For a moment, the Dragon King's eyes flared brighter. An unforeseen complication, but one we can use to our advantage. Fear makes people easy to control, after all. The gathered elite nodded in agreement. They had long ago learned that the Dragon King's plots within plots always served a greater purpose. What of the Golden Goose? A third voice inquired. Its promises of prosperity could upset the balance. The Dragon King's form solidified slightly, taking on a more serpentine appearance. The Golden Goose is a fool's distraction, 
Its eggs may glitter, but they are as empty as the promises of politicians. We will let it play its part for now, but when the time is right, the threat hung in the air, unspoken but understood by all. And what is our part in all this? The first masked figure asked. The Dragon King uncoiled itself, stretching to its full, impressive height. You, my dear pawns, will continue to pull the strings from the shadows. Whisper in the right ears. Plant the seeds of doubt and discord. The black swan will ascend when the time comes, but we will truly rule. The Dragon King's laughter echoed through the hidden chamber as the secret conclave concluded. Above, in the streets of the capital, the people of Eleutheria went about their lives, unaware of the machinations unfolding beneath their feet. The stage was set. The beasts were in play. And Eleutheria teetered on the brink of a change that would shake it to its very foundations. The day of reckoning arrived with a sky the color of bruised plums. Thunder rumbled in the distance, a fitting backdrop for the confrontation that was about to unfold. In the great central plain of Eleutheria, the white buffalo stood proud, its coat gleaming despite the gloomy weather. Beside it, the phoenix perched on a rocky outcropping, its fiery plumage a stark contrast to the darkening sky. The golden goose waddled nearby, occasionally laying a shimmering egg. The black swan was facing them across the plain, its ebony feathers absorbing what little light remained. The gray rhino pawed the ground beside it, snorting plumes of hot breath into the cool air. Between these titanic forces, the people of Eleutheria gathered. Some rallied behind the white buffalo, others clustered near the black swan. Many simply stood in between, uncertain and afraid. The white buffalo's voice boomed across the plain. People of Eleutheria, the time has come to reclaim our greatness. Too long have we allowed ourselves to be led astray by false promises of progress. The black swan's melodious tones cut through the air in response. Progress is not to be feared but embraced. We cannot cling to the past if we hope to build a better future. As they argued, the gray rhino began to stamp its feet, creating tremors that rippled across the ground. The golden goose squawked in alarm its golden eggs rolling away. High above, unseen by those below, the Dragon King circled, its serpentine form blended with the dark clouds, only occasionally visible when lightning flashed. The white buffalo lowered its head, preparing to charge. You speak of progress, but your words ring hollow. What have your changes brought but chaos and division? The black swan spread its wings wide. And what has your so-called greatness achieved? A land mired in outdated thinking, unable to adapt to a changing world. As tensions rose, the phoenix suddenly took flight, its wings leaving trails of flame in the air. It circled above the gatherid crowds, its voice cutting through the arguing. Behold, it cried, while you bicker, the true threat goes unaddressed. All eyes turned to where the phoenix was pointing with its beak. The gray rhino, seemingly tired of being ignored, had begun another rampage. It charged through the crowd, scattering people left and right. This is what happens when we ignore our problems, the phoenix declared. When we let our disagreements blind us to the real issues facing our land. For a moment, there was silence save for the thundering footsteps of the gray rhino. Then, slowly, people began to move, not away from the rhino, but towards it. They linked arms, forming a human chain in its path. The rhino skidded to a halt, clearly confused by this unexpected resistance. A voice rose from the crowd. We see you now. We've ignored you for too long, but no more. Another joined in. We may disagree on many things but we all call Eleutheria home. It's time we faced our problems together. The white buffalo and black swan exchanged glances, momentarily united in their surprise at this turn of events. As the people of Eleutheria came together to face the gray rhino, the dragon king's eyes narrowed. 
this wasn't part of the plan. With a roar that shook the air, it dove from the clouds, no longer content to remain hidden. The battle that followed was epic in scale, with each beast representing a different facet of Eleutheria's struggle. The white buffalo charged, embodying the desire to reclaim past glories. The black swan danced through the air, its movements promising change and progress. The phoenix rose and fell, each time emerging stronger, a symbol of resilience in the face of adversity. In a surprising turn of events, the golden goose began using its eggs as projectiles, showing that prosperity could be a double-edged sword. No longer ignored, the gray rhino fought with the pent-up fury of long-neglected problems. And through it all, the dragon king weaved and struck, its shadowy form a constant reminder of the hidden forces that sought to manipulate Eleutheria's fate. The people of Eleutheria didn't stand idly by. They joined the fray, not as passive observers, but as active participants in shaping their nation's future. As the battle raged on, storm clouds gathered overhead, mirroring the chaos on the ground. Lightning split the sky, and rain began to fall, turning the battlefield into a muddy quagmire. The rain poured down in sheets, drenching combatants and spectators alike. The muddy ground made footing treacherous, adding an extra layer of challenge to the already chaotic battle. The white buffalo's once pristine coat, now streaked with mud, lowered its head and charged at the black swan. But the swan, graceful even in the downpour, easily evaded the attack, using its wings to glide just out of reach. You cannot stop change, the black swan called out, its voice carrying over the storm. Eleutheria must evolve or perish. The white buffalo snorted, shaking water from its face. Change without wisdom is just chaos. We must remember who we are and what made us great. As they clashed, the phoenix swooped low, its flames hissing in the rain but refusing to be extinguished. It dive-bombed the gray rhino, which was still being corralled by the determined citizens of Eleutheria. Face your problems, the phoenix screeched. Confront them head on. The gray rhino, for its part, seemed to be tiring. Its rampage had slowed, and there was a look in its eyes that almost seemed like relief, as if it was glad to finally be acknowledged. Meanwhile, the golden goose waddled through the battlefield, still laying eggs, but at a much slower rate. The rain had washed away much of its luster, revealing that beneath the golden sheen, it was just a goose after all. Prosperity isn't everything, it gasped between labored breaths. There's more to greatness than gold. Above it all, the Dragon King swooped and dove, its serpentine form slicing through the rain. It was everywhere and nowhere, whispering doubts into ears one moment, sowing discord the next. But its shadowy form seemed less substantial in the harsh light of day and the unforgiving rain. As the battle raged on, something unexpected began to happen. The people of Eleutheria, who had joined the fray to confront the Grey Rhino, started to move between the other combatants as well. They formed living barriers, separating the beasts and calling for calm. Stop, cried a young woman, standing between the white buffalo and the black swan with her arms outstretched. Can't you see? Your fighting is tearing our land apart. An old man stepped forward, his voice quavering but strong. We don't need to choose between tradition and progress. We need both. More voices joined in, rising above the storm. The white buffalo reminds us of our values. The black swan shows us new possibilities. The phoenix teaches us to rise from our failures. Even the gray rhino has a lesson. We can't ignore our problems. As these voices grew louder, the fighting began to slow. The beasts, symbols though they were, couldn't help but listen to the will of the people they claimed to represent. Seeing its carefully laid plans unraveling, the Dragon King let out a roar of frustration. It dove towards the crowd, determined to stir up more chaos. But as it approached, something remarkable happened. The people of Eleutheria stood their ground, 
united in purpose if not ideology. They linked arms, forming a human chain that even the Dragon King couldn't penetrate. Their combined will, their desire for a better Eleutheria, formed a shield that the shadowy beast couldn't breach. Realizing it had lost its power, the Dragon King let out one final defeated roar before dissolving into mist, carried away by the wind and rain. The storm began to subside as if responding to this turn of events. The rain lessened to a drizzle, and hints of sunlight began to peek through the clouds. The beasts, the white buffalo, black swan, phoenix, golden goose, and gray rhino, stood in a circle, regarding each other warily but without the earlier hostility. Around them, the people of Eleutheria waited with bated breath. It was the phoenix who broke the silence, its voice tired but hopeful. Perhaps, perhaps we all have a role to play in Eleutheria's future. The white buffalo nodded slowly. Tradition and progress. Maybe they're not as incompatible as we thought. And facing our problems, added the gray rhino, its voice softer now, almost apologetic, is the only way to truly move forward. The black swan dipped its head in agreement. Change doesn't mean forgetting who we are. It means becoming the best version of ourselves. The golden goose, looking somewhat deflated but oddly relieved, chimed in. And true prosperity comes from more than just material wealth. It comes from a society that values all its members. As the beasts spoke, the sun finally broke through the clouds, casting a rainbow across the sky. The people of Eleutheria looked up in wonder, seeing in that arc of colors a symbol of their own diversity and potential. The rainbow arching across the sky seemed to energize the crowd. A sense of possibility, of hope, renewed, spread through the gathered Eleutherians. They began to talk amongst themselves, no longer divided into rigid factions, but mixing freely, sharing ideas and concerns. The beasts, too, seemed transformed by the moment. Though still muddy, the white buffalo's coat caught the sunlight in a way that made it glow. The black swan's feathers, rather than absorbing light, now reflected it in iridescent sheens. The phoenix's flames burned steady and warm, no longer threatening but comforting. No longer stamping and snorting, the gray rhino stood calmly, its presence a reminder rather than a threat. And the golden goose, though less sparkly than before, had a contented look about it. As the crowd's chatter grew, a young girl stepped forward. She couldn't have been more than ten years old, but her voice rang out clear and strong. What happens now? she asked, looking from beast to beast. How do we move forward? The beasts exchanged glances, each seeming to defer to the others. Finally, the phoenix spoke. Perhaps, it said, its voice gentle. That's not for us to decide alone. We are but aspects of Eleutheria, reflections of its hopes and fears. The true path forward must come from all of you. The white buffalo nodded its massive head. We've each tried to lead in our own way, believing we alone knew what was best for Eleutheria. But true wisdom comes from many voices, not just one. Indeed, the black swan added, change is inevitable, but how we change and what we become, that's a choice we must all make together. The gray rhino stamped a foot, not in anger but for emphasis. And we must face our challenges together. No more ignoring the difficult issues. The golden goose ruffled its feathers. We must redefine what prosperity means for Eleutheria. It's not just about gold, but about the richness of our community, culture, and shared future. A murmur of agreement ran through the crowd. People began to form circles, discussing ideas, sharing concerns, and, most importantly, listening to each other. As this impromptu forum took shape, the beasts began to change. Like a living constellation of stars, the white buffalo's form became less solid. The black swan seemed to melt into a pool of midnight that reflected the hopes and dreams of those who gazed into it. 
the phoenix's flames grew softer, becoming a warm glow surrounding the gathering. The gray rhino's tough hide transformed into a living map of Eleutheria, its features changing as people discussed different regions and issues. The golden goose's feathers turned translucent, shimmering with the combined light of a thousand ideas. As night fell, the transformed beasts rose into the air, their ethereal forms merging with the stars above. The people of Eleutheria watched in awe, understanding that while the physical manifestations might be gone, the spirits of what they represented would always be a part of their land. The impromptu forum continued long into the night, lit by the soft glow left behind by the phoenix. Ideas were shared, plans were made, and connections were forged across old divides. The land felt different as dawn broke on a new day in Eleutheria. The air was charged with possibility. Though tired from a night of discussion, the people were energized by a shared sense of purpose. There was still much work to be done, old wounds to heal, new challenges to face. But for the first time in a long while, the people of Eleutheria faced the future without fear or division, but with hope and unity. And high above, if one looked closely at the morning sky, they might just see the faint outlines of buffalo, swan, phoenix, rhino, and goose in the clouds, a reminder of the lessons learned and the journey ahead. As the new day progressed, the people of Eleutheria began to put their nocturnal discussions into action. The great plain that had been a battlefield just hours before was now transforming into a hub of activity. In one corner, a group was setting up a community garden, their hands deep in the soil recently churned by conflict. We'll grow food for all, a woman explained, wiping sweat from her brow. No more relying solely on the golden goose's promise of prosperity. We'll create our own. Nearby, a team of engineers and environmentalists huddled over plans. If we're going to address the issues the gray rhino represented, we need to start with infrastructure, a young man said, pointing to a schematic. Sustainable development that doesn't ignore our long-term challenges. Under a hastily erected tent, a diverse group was engaged in a lively debate about education reform. We need to honor our history, an elderly teacher insisted, but also prepare our children for a changing world. Heads nodded in agreement as they worked to balance tradition and innovation. As the sun climbed higher, more and more Eleutherians joined the efforts on the plane. Those who couldn't be there in person connected via hastily established communication networks, ensuring that voices from all corners of the land were heard. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Old habits die hard, and there were moments of tension as differing viewpoints clashed. Yet each time conflict threatened to derail their progress, someone would point to the sky, reminding everyone of the lessons learned from the dance of the beasts. As evening approached, a small group gathered on a hillock overlooking the plain. They watched the bustling activity below with a mixture of pride and trepidation. It's a good start, one of them said, but will it last? Can we really change centuries of division and mistrust so quickly? An older woman smiled, her eyes twinkling. Who said anything about quickly? This is just the beginning. We have a long road ahead, but now we're all walking in the same direction now. And what about the beasts? A young boy asked, looking up at the sky. Will they ever come back? The woman followed his gaze, watching as the last light of day painted the clouds in fantastic colors. She thought she saw familiar shapes forming in the sunset for a moment. They're always with us, she said softly. In every choice we make, every challenge we face, every step forward we take together. The dance goes on, but now we're all part of it. As night fell once again on Eleutheria, the plain glowed with lanterns and campfires. The sounds of work mingled with laughter and song. It was the symphony of a nation reborn, finding harmony in its diversity and strength in its challenges. And high above, the stars twinkled like knowing eyes, 
watching over Eletheria as it took its first tentative steps into a new era. The dance of the beasts had ended, but the dance of the people was just beginning. The end. From all of us here at the Elephant Island Chronicles, we hope you have enjoyed this original short story by Conrad Hannon. Until next time, stay gruntled.